Hey everyone, I can't contain my excitement because I've got some awesome news to share. The Zero RGV community is taking things to the next level. For the first time ever, we are introducing our very own web app for looking at and understanding geospatial data. Get ready for the awesome things our new app can do. This is just the start of something really big. This is more than just news. It is a game changer in how we see and understand geospatial data. Don't even think about stopping the video because if you have ever been curious about the power of the web applications, you are about to step into a whole new world of cool stuff. Stay with us, let's jump into this exciting adventure of understanding our world in a new way. You won't believe what you will be able to do with the remote online applications for your special data analysis. To have full access to the app, just go to the GeoRGV community website at this course doc online, then select the tab Geoscience, and here in this page I'm going to be low adding all the apps I'm going to be creating. The first one is the histogram and map generator. Then click on the bottom, and in this page you have a full explanation how this app works. And at the bottom you have the comment section. This comment section is really, really important for me. Do you have ideas? suggestions, insights into what could make our application even better. This comment section is going to be the meeting point between the GeoRGB community and me, okay? Then you can give me the feedback about this application, how we can improve the application, what kind of features you are missing, how we can make this application even better for the environmental projects. What kind of other applications do you think could be very useful for your job? Then at the end, your feedback is going to provide me the proper direction for the development of the correct uh, online applications for the environmental projects. Any comment will be appreciated. Then if we go again to the top of the page, you are going to see here that we have another button with this button, we can have access directly to the app. Then just click on the button. This one is the online application. And as you can see, it's just a website. You don't need to have any software installed in your computer, okay? It works remotely with a remote server. And in the server, we have all the computers, all the CPU, memory, you know, to make this application work. Then the first thing is to load the file, and this file has to be a CSV file. Then we can browse here and select the file we want to load. In this case, we are going to load the Muse River data set. Then open, and that's okay. Now it's creating a histogram with the X coordinate. But before to start to explain how it works, let's go to talk a little bit about the CSV files. Then that file is this one. Inside the folder simulation, I have the simple Kriegin, and here I have the data set, and the file that we are loading on the app is this one here. And OK. And in this file, what we have is the X and Y coordinates, and we have several metals. The concentration is in purple millions, we have also the elevation, elevation of the terrain, and also the distance to the river, the concentration of organic materia, the flow frequency, the type of soil, and other parameters. In this case, today, we are going to be working with the zinc concentration. It is important to say that here, we need to separate the decimals with a point. In other way, if you are using a comma, that one is not going to work. You need to use a point. And also, if you don't know how to save the file as a CSV file, just go to File, Save As, and here when you have the options to save the file, select here this format, Test CSV. 
This software is the Open Office, but the same is with the Microsoft Office. Let me show you. Go to the file. Then here, save as. Select the folder where you want to save the file. And here you have to select the CSV, delimited by comma. Then we can close this one. And we can close this one. Now we know how to create a CSV file to be loaded on the app. Then the next step is to select the parameter of interest for the histogram. Then in our case, as we say previously, is going to be the sync concentration. Then we have to select here the sync concentration. The next step is to select how many bins we want for the histogram. In this case, we want 12 bins. And as you can see, for each bin, we have a different color. That is very interesting because all the samples in this bin are going to have the same color on the map. We're going to see that one later. The next thing is we want to populate the map. We have to select the coordinates, the column for the coordinates, then choose the X coordinate. In this case, the X coordinate is located in the column designated with the letter X and the Y coordinates in the column with the letter Y. That's what we saw over here, right? This one is the column X with the X coordinate, and this one is the column Y with the Y coordinate. Then also what we have to add is the EPSG code. And now I'm going to tell you how you can get this code. For this project, the code is 28992. Then as you can see, now the map is uh, populated with the samples. Be aware that the coordinates has to be in UTM. We cannot use latitude and longitude, it has to be UTM. Then here also we can select different kind of maps. This one is the open street map, but we can select also the uh, wall street map from the ESRI, the topographic map, the satellite imagery with high resolution, and also the toner one. The satellite imagery, if you may zoom, because you have that option, you can press here to go and make zoom. And as you can see, if we go deeper, you are going to see that the resolution of the satellite imagery is really high and is really good in this case. Also, as I mentioned uh, previously, all the samples that we have in this bin that is the red color on the map are going to be presented on red color. And also if you put the mouse on the, on the point, you are going to see what is the concentration for the sink. In this case, we have 1,190 ppm. And in this case, for example, we have uh, 214 ppm. And this sample is located inside this beam. And the yellow one is located inside this bin. Also, we can select the type of transformation we want to apply to our data. And we have different ones. If we click here, you can see that we have the logarithmic with base 10. We have the natural logarithmic. We have the inverse transformation, the square root transformation, and the cube root transformation. Then if you press any of these transformations, the histogram changes automatically because we change the data and now we have a different histogram. It makes the, the log 10 transformation for the sync concentration and also it is updated automatically on the map. You can see now the colors are changing because we have different colors on the histogram. Now the samples the highest uh, samples is the concentration from here to here and is the green one. And that's the ones that we can see more on, on the satellite imagery. Also, now we can change that one for this one. That is easy to see the colors. Also, we can apply, for example, the square root transformation. And again, the transformation update automatically the histogram and also the colors of the samples according to the new histogram. Now let's go to put this one without no transformations and we can explain the next thing. 
we can show the mean value on the graph if we check this box. And also we can show the median value. And we can take out the legend. And also we can add the legend. It depends if you want the legend on the graph or you don't want it. And also we can calculate the statistics, the fundamental ones. If you click calculate the statistics, it's going to appear this uh, table over here where, where we can see the mean, the median, the mode, the standard deviation, the variance, the minimum value, the maximum value, and the total number of samples. The minimum and the maximum is the minimum concentration and maximum concentration for the sink. Also, we can take the table out if we don't want to see it. Once we calculated the statistics, if we make any transformation, the table is going to change the values. Now, according with the transformation that we did, in this case, it's showing the data associated with the logarithmic with base 10. But if we make a different transformation, for example, the square root, you are going to see that now we have different values. Then every time we make a transformation, the table update also automatically. Now we can see the last feature of this uh, online application, and it's going to be the possibility of getting this graph. Just press the button, download, press here, and then double click to open the file. Here is the histogram. But also, if you want to see the legend, you can add the legend here, show the legend, and also we can download. And now the image that we are going to get is with the legend, as you can see over here. Now you can save this uh, file and you can use for any of your projects. Another thing that we can download is the statistics, the table for the statistics. Now let's go to take the transformation because I want the values without any transformation. Then I can press this button over here, download statistics and double click to open. These statistics are going to be open with uh, open office that is the software that I'm using but if you are using the Microsoft office that one is going to be open with the Excel and here we have the values for no transformations in our data then we can close this one and go to the app the next thing is just to explain how you can get this go over here the reference coordinate systems the datum that you are using for project your data then First, I'm going to open uh, Google Earth to make an explanation. Then here we can close this one. And if we go here to Muse River, then here I save the location. Is this location over here? This area is the same that we have on the map. Is this one over here? That's the same. Then if we go here to tools, then go to options. Here you are going to see that I have the universal transverse Mercator. That's the UTM coordinates. Okay. Then okay. And here at the bottom, you can see the zone. And the coordinates in this case is zone 31 and is the hemisphere north. Then what we have to do, for example, is to go to Google. Let me open Google here. And in Google, I can ask what is what is the code? Code E P G S corresponding to WGS, that's the reference coordinate system that Google is using, 84, zone 31, north, because that's the hemisphere north. Then click here, and it's going to give us the code. It is 32631, but in our case, we are using Sorry. In our case here, we are using a special one because this one is specific for Netherlands. Okay. I'm going to show you here now with the QGIS. But you can use that technique to 
to find any other code, right? When you are using the WGS, that is the most uh, common uh, datum that people are using. But if you have a very specific uh, datum like this one, you can check also in QGIS. Now I'm going to show you how you can do it. And for example, I'm going to open this project that has that location over there. And as you can see over here, here we have the datum. And in that case, we're using this reference coordinate systems, right? That is the 28992 is the one we add on the on the app 28992. That's a very specific uh, datum for this area, right? But we can use also in this case, for example, if we want the, the w, WGS, this one over here, 84, dash UTM, and in our case, it's the 31 we said, because that's what we saw on the, on the Google Earth. This one over here, and as you can see, we have the 32631, but in our case, this code is not going to work because we have different coordinates, right? These coordinates are different, are not in that system. Then even if we add that code in our application, it's not going to work. 32631. As you can see here, 32631 is not showing any any area, right? Because it's, it's not working. Then 28992. Now I'm going to add a different example where we can use that coordinate. Let me show you here. We can open a different one. Let's go to the desktop. R3, number two. No, let me see where is the other example. A4, number two, this one over here. This one is the World Camp Aquifer data set. We was talking about this project at the second lesson of the fourth uh, geostatistic course when we was using the universal Kriegen. I can show you the data set. It's just... Uh, Number four here, this one, this one is already in CSV file, then double click to open. Okay, and what we have here is just the X and Y coordinates and the groundwater elevation for different piezometers. And in this case, we have the Darun is the WGS84. But I don't remember the zone. Let me open the data first here. Then let's go to change this one. Rows. Desktop number four. Number two. This one over here. 84, zone 13. Open. Parameter of interest, we want to see the groundwater. We have 85 samples, then we can add here 10 bins for the histogram. X is the column for the coordinates for the X, and Y is for the Y. And now we have to look for the code. Then we can go here, close, go here. And we say that is WGS 84, 13 is this one, right? 32, 6, 1, 3. 32, 6, 1, 3. Then it's 32, 32, 6, 1, 3. And it's, oh, that's our area for the World Camp Aquifer. And it's uh, the data now is perfectly located. Well, that's it about the reference coordinate systems. If if you need more information about it, just uh, let me know. I believe with the things I explained already, it's enough just to 
to see the information on the application. And now the next thing I would like to talk about it, it's about the server where this app is located. Then we can open a new one and it's, it's a shiny, shiny app. Then we can go here and open this website. The application is located in this uh, remote server, Shiny Apps. And if you go here to prices, you are going to see that the, if we are using the free version, we can load just five applications and we can use it for 25 hours. 25 hours is almost nothing, right? The, the time is going to be consumed very fast. Then in order to have the application active, I have to pay for a special plan that is not for free, right? That's the reason because I would like to say to the people, if you want to use the application, that's okay, but don't use professionally, okay? Don't use, you know, massively. Just try, check it, let me know if you like it, what things you would like to change, things like that, right? But don't stay using the application for a very long time because I'm paying to have the application active on the server. If you think that we are, you are going to use for a very long time, just consider to make a donation on the website, right? If you go to the application here at the bottom, you can make a donation. Just let me know, okay, I'm going to use the application for a very long time because I like it. It's pretty useful for my projects. Please just let me know, make a donation, then I can pay for an expensive uh, plan and people can use for longer, right? Because if the time is uh, done, uh, you are not going to have access to the application. Then you have to wait for the next month to update the hours. Then please consider that one. Don't use massively because, you know, I like the people to, to try in the application as much people as possible. And if someone is taking very long time using the application, it's going to take the chance for other person to, to try the application. I really appreciate it if you take that one in consideration. Well, that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. And remember just to leave a comment, you know, in the comment sections about what you think of this application. Thank you very much and see you on the next video.